Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to let people know I put up a very important uh, posting about a um, series of MATLAB videos and my own notes on them and my own term and my own interpretation of them. Uh, basically what they're stating is the importance of uh, developing a model uh, however you do it. This is done visually through uh, Simulink. There's another product out there uh, that's part of the MATLAB ecosystem that can also be dropped into uh, Simulink which enables you to control the flow of your data and how your model uh, generates that data. And what you can do with this one product within Simulink is be able to use uh, event um, events uh, to trigger different types uh, of action or logic or rules um, based upon different states of where how your data flows and how your algorithm calculates that data or how it processes the data. That's probably the biggest uh, challenge for a lot of developers, a lot of researchers, is the ability to be able to do a real-time analysis on data as it comes in to uh, the algorithm of the model and have a process, uh, an algorithm, uh, process that model. Um, so you have a series of, as I said, events um, and based upon certain what they call states uh, that will trigger different types of events um, and, and you know it's all built obviously around logic and then be able to have it do something uh, based upon those states and those conditions. Uh, you can do this in parallel with uh, certain states that um, uh, can be uh, oscillating off each other or however you want to do it. Um, but uh, this does take away a lot of the uh, confusion, I guess, on how to, con how to code this up and be able to process it properly. The uh, nice thing about MATLAB is it enables you to do that in real time and do the development of the algorithm in a model visually. Um, and from that, obviously, I've stated this before, where you can bang out um, two, um, two uh, coding uh, implementations. Uh, one is obviously C or C++, and the other one is your HDL or your FPGA, which can be either uh, from Xilinx, uh, the Verilog, or your HTML for FPGA. I mean, that's ultimately going to be my end target is FPGA. I've talked about FPGA, which is obviously the lowest latency out there. Um, and some of these uh, uh, MATLAB presentations um, showcase in detail uh, how to build an FPGA system built off of a model from Simulink using this other product, which handles all that real-time logic. Um, and uh, that is the key to the whole uh, Question. So I do intend being able to build a, an algorithm is quite not hard. It's not easy, but it's not as hard as doing the um, the logic of, of that data as it comes in and being able to uh, react to it based upon a, a variety of different events. Um, so that's where I plan to live uh, in that product a lot, and it's all done visually. And as I said, you can um, bang out both the C, uh, C++ and the FPGA code. Now, regarding FPGA itself, somebody did um, mention about how it's not done properly. Now, I'm not an expert in any of this, but my theory is, is this. Part of the presentations, they bring in one of the manufacturers. There's only really two, Xilinx or Altera for the FPGA boards. Um, and they have specific um, uh, simulating blocks for their, 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 um, for their hardware. So that must make me wonder, why would a major mainstream FPGA manufacturer provide specific blocks from their um, uh, visual, uh, I guess they call them studio, and implement them and drop them into MATLAB. If MATLAB wasn't important enough and it wasn't able to generate that HDL code, then the question would be why would both uh, Xilinx and Altera provide, again, uh, custom blocks for uh, Simulink? 
that tells me it legitimizes the, the process that MATLAB or MathWorks is using to generate the FPGA code. So I'm okay with that because um, I've seen the code. It's not, it's pretty kind of close to reminding me of working with Assembler. And um, if you're not old enough to know what Assembler is and you are uh, getting into HFT, I'm going to tell you, you better get out now because you've got to be good at this language, or there's two languages. Um, they're not easy to pick up. And that's where MATLAB kind of shines, or the Simulink shines because it, it generates the code for you. I'm not saying it's the ideal answer, of course not, um, but it's a good reference point because you can also embed the, um, the, uh, the code, uh, all your comments from both the Simulink model as well as, oddly enough, you can link um, the whole process, the whole workflow of Simulink and all these other products right down to your final FPGA code. And you can link it back to uh, an Excel document, like for a requirements document. It's kind of cool. Um, and uh, makes life a lot easier. Especially when you're coming uh, from zero knowledge of it, you really got to know this stuff to be able to to do it properly. Um, when it comes to FPGA, uh, there's, from my understanding, watching these presentations, is there's the MATLAB, um, or sorry, a Simulink model and how we would interpret it, um, but also you need to uh, do what they call a co-simulation model as well to ensure that when you run both models in parallel, um, that the one that you would think you would uh, develop is the right way to do it. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get both the co-simulation model and the other model to generate zero um, error of um, uh, potential, uh, I guess. <laughs> Um, so that's what you're, try you're what you're striving for, um, and then you also have to run it through this um, third-party software. I've looked at it; very expensive piece of software for FPGA. That software alone is twenty thousand dollars, and basically, what it does it enables you to um, to verify that your uh, FPGA code or your 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 generated HDL code is optimized and and efficient. Um, and you have to be really good at that to be able to take your data types. So let's say you do your traditional model and double. You have to, in order to properly do it for FPGA, you have to do it in what they call a fixed point. And then not only that, but with the bits for each of the registers within the FPGA, you have to optimize um, those registers and make sure that you're properly allocating uh, everything done in bytes. So it does come down to very low level assembler type of language. And um, the nice thing is that the Simulink code generation for HDL does a pretty nice job to um, ensure that you are optimally um, uh, having the options of configuration uh, export or well, code generate efficient code in HDL. So it's not an easy process to do it manually or hand code it. Um, and if you did, I would probably uh, bend in front of you. Uh, I would think you are the kind of person that can literally walk on water. Um, and companies that hire these guys and gals that do FPGA coding must be, uh, I don't know. Their compensation must be incredible, incredibly high. Because that's pure, pure, pure HFT. Um, just for those that don't know, FPGA is the lowest latency out there, without a question. I've done my research. Uh, CUDA, it's getting there. It's fast, but FPGA is much, much, much faster. I thought FPGA and CUDA were the same, but they're not. To totally different types of hardware processes. And FPGA for pure HFT is... Uh, it's low. It's the lowest latency for um, round roundabout execution and uh, processing with streaming data for uh, market uh, data coming in. And really, um, unfortunately, uh, the stats that I've seen with 100% software solutions is not that efficient as compared to CUDA. But again, I, I repeat, FPGA versus CUDA. FPGA. Uh, take it from me, from my research.
Um, so that's what we're, that's why I'm more and more convinced I'm doing everything um, both in the, this product as well as a Simulink and using MATLAB as the way to get around it. But if money was no object, I would definitely, definitely just bypass everything. C++, um, CUDA, all these other things that I've looked at, I would easily bypass all that and go directly to FPGA without a doubt. Um, because FPGA is easily the fastest way to do it. But the nice thing by doing it in Simulink, doing it in this other product, this is the way to do it um, for FPGA. Um, and I'm, I do talk to a lot of high-end people that are in the field of um, quant shops and HFD shops. And uh, a lot of them that are making money now, like money, not us newbies doing all the software, the guys that are making the real coin right now is uh, the FPGA guys. And uh, who knows how long that'll last, but uh, not an easy process, and there's a lot of, a lot of barriers of entry to it. So, <laughs> I've gone on enough about FPGA and Simulink and all that stuff. So, if we go down this path, um, the value of this membership has just gone up exponentially um, because there's no one else talking FPGA. Highly secretive field. Um, and uh, this is the only way I know how to do it. Honestly, I've, I've researched the FPGA route and uh, you can hand code it with the HTML or the Verilog. It's not that easy. Um, and you're talking to a guy who's known five years of C and I've been programming since I've been 14. So um, I probably don't look that old, but <laughs> I, I thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, from this stuff to HFT, it's definitely FPGA. And watching these videos and the lucky members that are on the membership will get access to um, those references and what I'm talking about because, sorry guys, I'm not publicizing this anymore, it's too valuable, and uh, um, I've already dropped enough hints today and other um, past posts that uh, talk about this. Other than that, uh, I'll talk to you later, and uh, boy, am I tired. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what time it is. All right, later.